Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, so here's the deal. A lot of people have tried Hue Forge, and then they're like, ah, it's too complicated. Not everybody knows how to do everything. Driving isn't the only thing. So this video is for beginners. We've all been there. We've all been confused. There are a lot of options in Hue Forge that not everybody knows how to use. So this is kind of just to give a baseline to help you create your first Hue Forge if you haven't created one already, and just to kind of give some pointers and just show you around the UI and just that way you can get a better understanding and a better idea of what's going on. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them and I hope you learned something. So when you first open Hue Forge, it'll be in light mode. I've changed mine to dark mode. Most people want it to be in dark mode. All you have to do is you can turn it to light mode. You can turn it to dark mode. I just x-rayed myself. You'll notice on the left-hand side of your screen, you've got a filament library. Right here, mine says owned. This is all the filament that I own personally, that I've added to the filament library myself. This is not what is stock necessarily in the filament library. The filament library, it's to give you a little bit of an idea of the TD values, which means transmission distance. Um, that's how opaque your filament is, whether that is see-through or not, how much light can pass through your filaments while you're printing it. So like we have Bamboo Labs uh, filament, we have Kexcel, Hatchbox, Polymaker, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of good starting points, but when you're starting QForge, it is a huge deal that you get your TDs right, okay? Because sometimes we see, actually a lot of the time, we see variations in transmission distance. So what that means is, Although here, like Bamboo Lab Basic Pink is an 8TD in the library, that does not necessarily mean if you have a basic pink at your house that it is going to be an 8TD. We have seen variation in TD. Like at one point I had a Sunloo spool that was a 2TD and my friend had a Sunloo spool that was a 6TD. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just because of the way that filament is manufactured. That is a huge deal. When you're dealing with TD, a 0 to a 4 is very opaque. That means that you're going to get very quick color separation in your hue forges, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, a 4, 2, and 8, that is a really versatile style filament. Um, you can get really quick transitions, or you can get some good blending with it. And then anything from like an 8 to a 12 is basically transparent. Anything beyond 12 is literally transparent. You're not going to get any, any good results with a 12+. plus. But those are very, you're not really going to find those, um, other than like Polymaker Natural and just filaments that don't have any kind of color or pigment in them. Okay, so enough with that. How do you test TD? So right now, the there is a device called the TD1. My friend Ajax developed it to measure TD, and then he actually has resellers that sell them. I'll pop up a link on the video right now so that you can go check it out. He'll also be in the description. You can go check out the resellers and get your hands on one if it's something you're interested in, but you do not have to. Um, there are also ways of measuring TD without any kind of technology. All you have to have is seashell test is what we're calling it. If you come in, so this is what your, your folder will look like currently with 0 0.7.2. Whenever you click on it, come through HueForge, you're going to see all of this. This is where you get your EXE to load HueForge. Um, so right now we have, um, projects. This is where there will be different different images that you can test out. And underneath tools, this is where you will have your seashell test. So the seashell test, we'll go ahead and bring it into HueForge. Before I get into it, we have a PDF to kind of explain how it works. Um, I'm not going to go over it super in depth in this, but you're basically just looking for different um, blending where it's starting to blend. I'm not gonna go super in depth, but this is what it looks like whenever you bring it in to HueForge. Go back to filament, I'll leave the seashell on the screen. So, for example, if we have right now in, the, in our sliders here, this controls the layer height. You can see here in the center, we also have this color core, is what we're calling it. These individual boxes are a visual representation for you so that you can see exactly what layer the filament is going to swap at. So right now we have a min depth. That is how, that is a very minimum amount. Turn on wireframe up here so that you can see. This is your min depth right here. 
So it's 0.48 is what we have it set to. So if I go 0.48, this is where the Hue Forge actually starts to begin, start doing color swaps. So if we bring this up, we'll get out of wireframe. Wireframe is really good for other modes, but we're not going to really worry about it too much today. You can see what Hue Forge is doing with this image. So basically it's going to look at your image with like a black and white filter. This image just so happens to be black and white. But even if you have a colorful image, it's going to look black and white to Hue Forge, and it's going to pick out your whites and your blacks. The whites are going to be the tallest parts of your mesh, whereas the blacks will be the deepest parts of your mesh. Um, so let's, for this, we'll go up to some of my filaments. So remember, TD is super important whenever you're doing Hue Forge. So we have black here at the bottom. That's very typical. We usually start with a black and standard mode, and we'll work our way up to white. Let's bring in a lower TD. So this Bamboo Lab Basic Blue I have is a 2.8. Like I said, that's a very low TD, and you can see that we lose all of that blending that we had with the 9 TD white. So, again, super important, and you can see we're, we get more blending with a 5.7 than we did with a 2.8. Super important to measure your TDs, and the seashell test is a way to do that. You can see that you're getting more detail out of this image without having to mess with your sliders. Now that we kind of understand filaments and how important that is, to set up an image, let's bring in, we'll go to our projects folder, get out of our tools, come to projects. This project kind of shows you what we're doing with blending a little bit. So what I want you to do when you're first starting out with Hue Forge, I'm sure you've seen online a lot of really cool blending images and a lot of images that look very color accurate. I don't want you to think of it like that. I don't want you to think, okay, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to put an image in, and then it's going to just copy what colors I have and look exactly like the picture. It's not an image recreator when you're starting out. It takes a lot of work and a lot of tweaking to get those color accurate results. So think of it more as an artistic tool. As you can see here, we've got this, um, this particular AI generated image. And over here, it looks good. It doesn't look necessarily just like our base image but it looks really good and it looks really cool in my opinion um so like i said i just want to get get a realistic expectation out of the gate because a lot of people come into it and get frustrated because they start throwing in colors and thinking that it should be perfect and it's just it's not when you're starting out i want you to come down to this little drop down just below new filament these are different um, presets, and you can actually save a preset. So like, let's say that you had a bunch of filaments for like a retro themed, like your pinks, your blues, and your yellows, and you wanted to save that for a future project or whatever. So we can go in here, we can add and update our sets. But for this, we'll just bring in the grayscale set. So this just gives you a basis. Um, so that way you don't have to drag in each individual filament. There's a bunch of them here so that you can kind of see um, just generally how it's supposed to be set up. Like I said earlier, you start with a black, you end with a white, and then everything in between. So let's start with grayscale. Grayscale is going to be the easiest because Hue Forge is looking at these in standard mode with a black and white filter. You can see here I changed the image format to luminance instead of in color. So it's looking at your luminance values. I brought in the grayscale presets, that way we can just play around with it so you can see what's going on in Hue Forge when I play with the sliders. You can also bring in extra colors from the filament library to just kind of give you... You don't necessarily have to have the color, but it's a good, it's a good thing to go ahead and try and test out different filaments that are in the filament library to just kind of give you a basis and kind of, you know, before you buy a filament, or a bunch of filament because you're going to need it for Hue Forge. Before you buy any extra filament or whatnot, you can actually test with it. Um, that's a huge benefit for Hue Forge in general and for having the filament library. So when you're first starting out, it's a great idea to just kind of try to match what's going on here while it's in luminance mode rather than while it's in color mode. Because color mode, like I said, is a lot more complicated to wrap your head around. In your color sliders, you have a few options. You have reorder sliders. So reorder sliders, let's bring in an extra color, we'll bring in red. 
Um, we'll put reorder or we'll put red here down at the bottom. If we click reorder sliders, it's going to order them from bottom to top. Um, that's all that option does. It's very useful. Down here, you have these green buttons. This is telling you exactly what layer um, you'll do the swaps at. You can actually turn off a layer if you don't want the red for this instance, or you can turn it on. Very useful um, whenever you're just testing a bunch of different colors. It also shows you what layer heights these are going to be swapped at. Um, another option is invert sliders. You can see white came down to the lowest point, black went to the highest point. And then we can go back to how we were before. Um, reset unused sliders. We'll do zero height. You could see that it changed all of these from a colorful, from colorful sliders to white sliders. That's all that's doing. So now if we come over to model geometry, model geometry, we have min depth, max depth. Min depth, that is going to be how thick we're going to start the hue forge. So right now, this is a very thin hue forge. It's saying actual depth is at 1.97 millimeters. Very thin. Um, you don't have to make a hue forge thin if you want to make it thicker so it's not so floppy. Whenever you print it out, you can actually come in here and like we'll say 1.24. So we'll add a millimeter to the bottom most. And then we'll actually, whenever you add like a, an extra millimeter or so on your min depth, you can come in here and add the same amount to your max depth. And then you can see over here in your color sliders, everything came down. So you'll have to bring all of those up. You can hit shift on your keyboard and then you can hover over all of these color sliders and it'll select them. And you can see that indicated with the blue box around them. And you should be able to hit the up arrow key on your keyboard to bring them up um, together. So you can also see that whenever we change that min depth and max depth, it added, you know, more, more to the color core, but now if there were, so typically in Hue Forge, you want to use PNGs, not necessarily JPEGs. You can use JPEGs, but it's just not going to look perfect just because of the way that file type is. There are a lot of pixels. Um, it's not very smooth and their backgrounds, it's just not great. So with that, there is some images that are gonna need spike removal. So spike removal, this is not a good image to show it. I don't have one um, for an example, but you'll see little pin spikes everywhere in your mesh. And when you do, that is what spike removal is for. Um, it's just like cutting off the topmost layers to kind of make it all a flat, even surface along the top. Think of it almost as like ironing for a hue forge. Um, the other thing that we have is Bright Enhance. You can see our brightness comps. These are different image editors um, to kind of help brighten up an image, to help bring out shadows more, to bring out highlights more. We can dim it. It just depends on what kind of effect you're trying to go for. Um, that way you don't have to go into an image editor and edit your image. Another thing that I want to go over before we end today, next to actual depth, we you can see dynamic depth here. We have static and clip depth. The only one that I typically use is static depth, and that is just going to set your depth statically. Who would have thought? Um, that way it's not changing based on this topmost slider. So if we come over here, we add go back into dynamic depth, you'll see as I move this topmost slider, it's changing, you know, the height of the mesh, the topmost of the mesh. Whereas if I know that I want my hue forge three millimeters thick, I just go to static depth. And then that way this top slider doesn't matter so much. Um, that's about it for today. You don't need a X1C or a Bamboo Lab printer to do hue forge. It's all swapped by layer as long as your printer supports pauses. You can use an Ender 3. For all my Creality fans out there,